Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper, Trader, Guide, Scout, and Interpreter, and just a country cook. Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with pretty Miss Sheila running that camera. Hi, Sheila. Hi. Today we're going to make beer batter onion rings. I'm going to make them for two reasons. One, because I'm from Minnesota and they beer batter everything up there. They got beer batter fish, onion rings. I think they got beer battered beer batter. I'm not sure. And they love their beer in their batter. In fact, they run around singing them songs. In heaven there is no beer. That's why we drink it here. And when we're gone from here, all our friends will be drinking all the beer. They love that kind of stuff up there. And the other reason I'm going to make these onion rings is because of Sheila. You see, Sheila and I go over to Sonic, that drive-in where the girls come up with the roller skates and bring you those delicious hamburgers. And I always ask Sheila, you want some onion rings? No, I don't want any. Are you sure? No, I don't want any. And I look out there and they got small, medium, large. And even though I want to get small for just me, I order mediums. Because when I get those burgers and I hand her her hamburger and I got mine, I sit that little cardboard tray on the center console of my truck. And pretty soon I notice my count ain't the same. There's, there's missing one here and there. So I kind of look like I'm looking out the window and out of the corner of my eye, I'll see that little fingers come over and take an onion ring. You know the lady that didn't want any? Yeah, so we're going to make a few extra onion rings because who knows, maybe a little finger will come in and grab one in the middle of the recipe. I don't know. But let's get started on some beer batter onion rings. Come on over here. I'll show you what I'm going to do. Now, I always use sweet onions, and I buy these big onions for the onion rings, and I go over to the section where it says sweet onions peeled. So they're already peeled, but that don't make any difference to me because I still cut the ends off, which I've already done, and then I do make a little cut in here and peel. Even though it says peeled, I still take that softer outer chunk off of there because it just doesn't work good for the onion rings. And then I cut these babies a, a nice oh, three-eighths or so, nice thick slices here. I've got one cut up already over here in this bowl. Whoop, whoop. Make sure you cut away from your hands. See what happens? Perfect reason why I always cut away from my hand. I think I can get one more slice out of there. I go down, you know, don't do any of this stuff here, you know. <laughs> Make sure you go straight down away from your hand when you're cutting. Now you can use smaller onions, but make sure you use sweet onions. And what I do is I punch these all out, and I pick the perfect ones like these little guys like this, I keep them in the refrigerator so I can go ahead and use them the next day. But anything that looks like it'll make a nice onion ring, I keep. And them little teeny baby ones out of the middle. Oh, these are so good in a salad. But I pick the ones that look like they'll really be nice for deep frying onion rings. Now see, that's a little soft on the outside, so I'll put him over there. These look good, and what I'm doing is I'm putting them in a bowl of cold water over here. Really cold, because this whole recipe, you want to keep everything as cold as possible and it'll fry up so crisp and so delicious. But there we go. These are even kind of good. I might throw a couple small ones in there. Then we're going to put this in ice cold water here, and we're going to hit this with a good teaspoon of salt and we're going to let these soak in here to make sure they're nice and cold. I'm even going to put in a little bit of ice. I just want to keep that really, really cold while it sits on the counter. Let me see if I can get this back in the camera frame a little better. And what we're doing is we're kind of making these sweat a little bit with that salt. It's going to pull some of the moisture out of the onion rings. And we're going to want that so we can coat it with flour. We'll see in about 20 minutes when these have been in this ice water long enough to where you can give it the first coating. See you then. All right, our onion's been soaking for about 20 minutes in this salt water. And here's the thing. How many times have you ate onion rings and the breading falls off the outside or the onion falls out? It doesn't stick to the onion. Well, this process is going to cure that. So what we're going to do here is I'm going to pick the best of the best out of here. And we're putting this in just regular flour. Kind of scoot around. Make sure you get the inside and the outside. And then we're going to lay them over here on the side here. And we're just going to let them set for, again, another 20 minutes until this breading, this flour, really soaks and sticks to the 
onion ring. We're going to make a batter which is totally separate than this process, but this process will make sure that your batter sticks not only during the frying process, but during the eating process to your onion rings. Let me get these all floured up, and again, this is just regular all-purpose flour. We just want to put a coating on these onion rings and set them over here on this rack so they get tacky. So it sticks to the onion, which has been sweating because of the salt. I'll be back when I get these all battered up here. Now I said get these all battered up. What I meant to say is get them all breaded up because we're going to make a batter. But this kind of reminds me of being down at my grandma halls years ago because we basically turned this flour and water on the outside of the onion into glue. And we used to make homemade kites when we were as kids. And what we use? A little flour and a little water, mix it up, put it on the newspaper, fold it over the string and the sticks, and that's a whole nother show. But that's what that reminded me of. So it's real tacky now. It's been sitting here for about 20 minutes. And while we're doing this, letting this rest, it'll give us an opportunity to make our batter. Now in here, we're going to put one cup of all-purpose flour and a quarter of a cup of cornstarch because that's going to make it real crispy and real good. Now let me tell you what's in here. I've got a teaspoon of paprika. Where's my little phone here? I always keep track of all my ingredients. Yeah, i got a teaspoon of paprika, a teaspoon of salt, a half a teaspoon of bacon powder, and a half a teaspoon of white pepper. And I use white pepper because then you don't see the little specks on there. And that's what we're going to put in there. And if I kind of mixed up the ingredients, don't worry because we always put all the ingredients right under the video. Just click on see more or add more, whatever that button is. It'll drop down. You'll see the entire description for the entire recipe in there. But we're going to mix this together and this is going to be our batter. Wait a minute. How can we have a batter with dry ingredients? Oh, I know. In heaven there is no beer. Now you can use any beer you want. You can use a dark beer, a light beer, light beer, Michelob Ultra is what I'm using here today. And I'm going to put in about a cup, but we're going to do this to where it turns into almost like a pancake batter. That's what we're looking for. So let me pour this in, kind of get this mixed, and see where we are. Now if you get it too thin, you can always add a little more flour, then a little more beer, and then a little more flour, and pretty soon you'll have a 55 gallon barrel of batter that you have to mix with an outboard motor. So we're going to try to make sure that we hit our target early. Now see this is a little thick, so this beer needs to thin this out. We want to get it nice and, oh, like, like I say, pancake batter, not too thin, but we want it so that they'll sink down in there when we move them from this rack over here into here and into the oil. So we're heating our oil up to 350 degrees. Now you can use peanut oil, you can use canola oil, you can use vegetable oil of any kind that you want. And let's see what we're doing here. Just took a little bit more flour to get a perfect batter. Look at that. We're ready to dip our pre-floured tacky onion rings in here and into the oil. But before I do that, I want to explain something. The other day we did a recipe where we did deep fried Coca-Cola. Now on the front of this cooker you'll see that it says 275 degrees. And I mentioned in the recipe that we were cooking at 350 degrees. And we were. This is passing 300 degrees right now and it kind of levels out at 350 when this cooktop here is set at 275. So don't let these cooktops lie to you. If you think you're cooking something at say 225 or 250, put a thermometer in the oil or in your recipe, whatever you're cooking, to make sure that this thing isn't lying to you. So now I'm going to cook these onion rings at 350 degrees. It's just a little over 300 and it'll stop at about 350 when I have this set at 275. So don't send me any emails that said, hey, you said you're cooking at 350, but yet your stovetop says 275, and I have no idea why. I kind of stumbled across that because I set it at 275 thinking, I'll go in and get some of our ingredients ready. This was on another recipe. Throw on my little trusty apron, come back in here, and I came back, and the gauge was at 350 degrees. I thought, that ain't right, but it stopped at 350. I thought, perfect. I know if I set this at 275, 
the oil will be at 350. Now we're up to about 310. We'll see at 350 and because that's where this is going to stop even though this is at 275. Just ignore that part and then we're going to put these onion rings in this beautiful batter and make these beer batter onion rings. See you in a few minutes. I just wanted to let you know this thing's lying to you. See what did I tell you, even though the cooktop is set at 275, look at the gauge, 350 degrees, ready to cook. But I just wanted to show you that. Okay, our oil is perfect, our batter is just perfect, our pre-flour breaded onions are perfect. It's time to put these in there. Now you can use a fork or anything you want, but I like these little skewers that you use for kebabs because when you pick one of these up and put it in there you don't get a lot of batter on here like you would with a fork that gathers it up on all the prongs so once we got it in there we want to shake off the excess kind of pick a moment when it's not dripping about right there drop it in the oil See, then we don't hardly have anything on this little skewer. I like using them little wooden skewers for this, just to push it under there. We're only going to do a few at a time. And then we're going to move them over here to our paper towel. Now, I was cooking venison heart the other day and I was putting it on a paper towel and a guy sent me an email that said I was watching it on the Food Network and they said to put it on a rack over paper towels but if the paper towel is that far below the rack how does that suck up any grease out of anything now, I've been cooking fish for many many years and I've been cooking stuff like this for years and I always put it on paper towels same with bacon or any of that stuff now, you go to some of these restaurants and they got that they got that bacon and it's just greasy. They've laid it on a rack over paper towels. So just for fun, and I, and I want the whoever sent that to me, just do it however you want to do it. That's fine with me. But just for fun, I went on YouTube and I looked up deep fried onion rings. And there was a lady on there cooking them. And I think she did a dry recipe or maybe a batter. I'm not sure. Maybe it was a beer batter recipe. And when she got done frying them up golden brown here she put them on a paper towel it was a lady maybe you heard of her Martha Stewart so if it's good enough for Aunt Martha it's good enough for Steve we're gonna put these babies on a paper towel over here and I'll bet they stay just as crispy and as crunchy as can be because it's gonna soak the oil out of them and I'll bet our first one is getting pretty close to being done here. We'll give them a little turn. Boy, them look good, don't they, Sheila? They do. See if I can't get another one in there. And when I when I breaded these all up or battered these all up or whatever I did with them, I put flour on them, I kind of stacked them about three levels high and they did just fine not touching each other. So that worked out pretty good. Now we can go to Sonic and carry our <laughs> okay, I see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> awesome. You always tell me you don't want any onion rings, but I see them little fingers in the corner of my eyes sneak in there. Yeah, but one's not bad. See? Well, you didn't say you wanted one. You said you wanted none. I know. <laughs> see, there's some... Now, I know you guys out there that are watching, you don't have any of them... Uh, women that do that kind of stuff. I, whoops, you got to put this in the batter first, Steve. Duh. See what happens? Sheila gets me all mixed up. But there's guys that got those wives out there that say, I'm not really on a diet. I'm just, you go ahead and order something and I'll just have a bite of yours. Well, I don't want anybody to have a bite of mine. I want to eat mine. Yes, or, you do. No, okay. You don't care. <laughs> okay. These are looking so terrific. Look at this. Man, oh man. Don't be afraid to cook the fire. And to see that batter never gets any thicker on that little stick. I like that part. You use a fork and you get all kinds of excess stuff in there. Well, honey, we're going to have to go to the state fair and get a booth and make beer batter onion rings and we'll make a million dollars.
<laughs> you know what? And she would go with me, too. She's just that kind of girl, I'll tell you. And I got another stick over here that I can use just for stirring these onion rings around and taking them out, and it won't never have any batter on it, so I can double stick it. You see what I'm saying, Sheila? Look at there. For all my Minnesota fans out there that like their beer batter stuff, this recipe is for you and anybody else that likes beer batter, fish, onion rings, whatever. Let's get these over here on this paper towel. Cool them off. And while they're still hot, let me get my salt shaker over here. While they're still hot, you want to give them just a touch. Now you can use kosher salt or whatever, but just give them just a little teeny sprinkle of salt on the outside while they're still hot. If you let them cool off, then the, and then the salt won't stick to them. And boy, they couldn't be happier with the outcome of these. These look just great. I see one's got the name Sheila written right on it. And see, here's the thing, after Sheila steals enough onion rings out of my little paper container over there. They don't give you that many stars. What is it? I think it's like six, eight, and ten or something like that. Six is the small, eight is the medium, and ten is the... And I have one, you have five. See? But you didn't say you wanted one. You said you wanted none. I said, are you sure you don't want any onion rings? Because I know what you'll do. You'll go buy me a whole bag. <laughs> well, why don't you just say, well, I'll have one of yours. So I know whether to get a small or a medium. You know I'm going to do uh, That's why I ordered the medium, because I know she's going she's gonna to swipe it from me here. All right. You notice how many more I got over here? Because I've been so shocked through the through the years of being ripped off from my onion rings that I made a whole bunch of them today. We're going to have way too many here. We're going to have to give some to the neighbors. <laughs> All right. Oh, you don't, I, you got it, you got it framed up over here. You yeah. don't have it on the paper towels, right? right? All right. We'll move over to the paper towel. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks to Sheila sneaking my little now I got batter on both these little sticks. I got to keep track of what I'm doing here. Look at how nice them turned out. Wow, we. Thanks to Sheila robbing them out of my little paper tub over there at Sonic. Da -da -da -da, Sonic. I love their little song too. I've got so many onion rings that I'm going to be cooking here for 15 or 20 minutes yet before I get done. Look at Yep, see, see. Man, oh man. I think if you just take one great big onion, you might have enough for a meal. You don't really need two. But I wanted to make sure that I had the best of the best looking onion rings that were real nice. And then anything on the outside, any of those that broke or any of them that didn't look just right or the little teeny, teeny, teeny parts. I left them in the bowl in the kitchen. They're going to go in a salad, and some of them will go in an omelet in the morning, and all the above. Look at me. Thanks to Sheila, I have onion rings <laughs> cooling <laughs> on paper towels all over the place. Now, if you got some guests coming over, remember, this is two onions, and the ends were cut off, and the centers were punched out. I never even used that part of it. I know she, I might be out of frame here, but let's let these cool, and then I'll show you how crunchy these are laying on paper towels. See you in a second. Look what I have created. Enough onion rings that even Sheila can swipe one. And I'm going to take one of these. These are cooling off a little bit. I'm going to take one of these, and I'm going to bite it up here by the microphone so you can see if it was okay to lay them on paper towels. You hear that crunch? Mmm. And look. The breading sticks to the onion because we pre-coated them. I love to bite them crunchy ones up there. And we got two types of dipping sauce here. The standard ketchup. Mm. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And over here, my favorite sauce for anything onion. Bloomin' onions, onion petals, onion rings, Frank's, red hot, sweet, 
chili sauce for dipping. Let me try just a dip of this. Oh, this stuff is so fantastic. This is delicious. You have got to try this recipe. They're crunchy. You can provide a couple different dipping sauces. Did I miss something? Did, did you guys see anything? I think that might have been the little onion ring bandit from Sonic who just swiped a big juicy onion ring out of there. And that's why I made some extra ones because I know them little fingies are going to show up sooner or later. But you're going to just love this. 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm missing an onion ring. There's supposed to be 22 of them laying here, but there's one missing, and I think the little Sheila Meister might have got it. Of course, I already bit out of this one again because it is so good. I love to crunch this up by the mic. Hear that? Yeah. They are just absolutely outstanding. Get you some sweet onions. Get you some beer, get you some batter, get those ingredients. I'll put it right underneath the video. Get yourself some Frank's Red Hot Sweet Chili Sauce for dipping and more. Ugh, I just love anything onion and that stuff. And get you some friends over to the house, whip this up, deep fry them, put them on a rack or paper towel, whatever you want to do, doesn't matter to me. But try this recipe. We hope you enjoyed it. And again, this goes out to all my beer batter friends up there in Minnesota. We hope you subscribe to our channel. Now that's pretty easy. Little Shotgun Red's face will pop up over here in just a little bit. When it does, click on it. When it says subscribe, right next to it is a bell. If you click on that bell and then click the notification box, you'll be notified every time we come out with a new recipe. We really hope you do that. We'll put another recipe over here that we hope you enjoy. And is this the best beer batter onion ring recipe mm. anywhere on the planet? If it ain't, it ought to be. By the way, like I mentioned, all the ingredients are right underneath the video. You never have to go to a website to get any of our recipes. But if you do want to sneak over to our website, you can do that too, shotgunred.com. You can click on our wine link and show you where all the wine is, only in Tennessee, unfortunately, but it's still delicious. Or you can click on Cooking with Shotgun Red and find our location. It'll run you right back to this. Or you can also go to our general store and find some Shotgun Red dolls like we have on the set videos of our live performance, all that stuff. But most of all, I'm going to take a couple of these and put them on a plate and just set them off to the side because I know the little swiper fingers are going to come by and grab some of these. And that is the biggest kick I get out of that. When I go to Sonic, nothing makes me happier than to be eating my big cheeseburger and out of the corner of my eye see a little finger come over from someone that absolutely did not want any onion rings and swipe one. I wouldn't have got it if the console wasn't so close. <laughs> the console was too close to her, so that's the reason. See you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Say goodnight, Sheila. Good night, Sheila. It's a wonder you can talk with your mouth full of onion rings. See you next time, you guys. Mm.